What do you do when an officer lies through his teeth and tags on false charges against you? What do you do when your defense attorneys try to pressure you into accepting a plea deal? What do you do when the judge in your case, along with the prosecutor and your own defense attorneys, conspire to have you imprisoned? What you're about to witness is a massive case of deliberate court corruption. Let's go and get a warrant. There's probably calling his attorney practically out there. He wants it executed. He's not going to come save him off at you. So we're going to execute the warrant. But he's out there. Probably waiting on his attorney or something. Can I just know what time the warrant was issued? What time did my attorney leave? You are now watching an ASD Docs investigation. Hey guys, my name is Andre, and in today's video, we're going to be exposing a lot of different people. Some of these people are police officers, while some of these people are of other higher authority positions. Today, today we're, we're going to be exposing BPD officer Jared Cardone, Cardone attorney, attorney Heather Chestnut, Chesna, attorney Daniel Torrent, prosecutor Nathaniel Swift, Swift and, and Judge Catherine Bernard Goodman of, of the West Jordan Third District, District Court. Court in Utah. Before, Before I go any further into this investigation, I must, must reiterate, reiterate that these are allegations. You are, you are presumed innocent to prove guilty, guilty in the court of law. law. I'll, I'll be leaving timestamp for those of you that want to skip the whole backstory of, of this case. case. I do recommend that you watch this video in its entirety so that you have complete context of the severity of what is really going on here. With, With all of that said, let's, let's get started. started. This, this is, is Luis Sanchez. Sanchez. He, he contacted, contacted me on Facebook on July 8, 2021, asking me for assistance in exposing defense attorneys, a district court judge, a prosecutor, a bailiff, and a court clerk. He assured me that he had tons of evidence to prove everything that he was telling me was true. As you can imagine, I was extremely skeptical. I never had a case where this much evidence was presented to me. This, this case, case is about corruption in every sense of the word. I want to give a quick shout out to Luis Sanchez's YouTube channel. After all of the lies and deceit and corruption that Luis has endured since 2014, he took matters into his own hands and filed a lawsuit against his own defense attorneys. He's a pro se plaintiff. I know for a fact Luis has a bright future within this community, and I hope all of you go over to his YouTube channel and let him know ASD Docs sent you. With, With all, all of that said, said here's, here's a quick word, word from our sponsor, sponsor and then we're going to get right into the investigation. Want, want to become your own investigator? investigator? Then you'll then always want to be at the ready. ready. Capture all, all the action with the dash cam from blackboxmycar.com. You may even get a discount on your car insurance. And with all the savings, the dash cam virtually pays for itself. Got tickets for traffic violations you did not commit? A dash cam can prove that too. Click on my link in the description and you can save 5% off your next dash cam or speak with the awesome team at Black Box My Car to find the best dash cam that fits your needs and budget. BlackBoxMyCar.com, reliable dash cams, free shipping, friendly dash cam experts. Now, back to the investigation. Mr. Mr. Sanchez, Sanchez has always maintained, maintained his innocence and demanded a jury trial for the charges that stem from an alleged DUI. DUI. Countless times he has requested video recordings of his arrest. Officer Jared Cardone from the UPD claimed that his dash camera had been malfunctioning on that night. The remaining recordings taken at the police station were unlawfully deleted by police and other reports were withheld from Mr. Sanchez. Mr. Sanchez's constant demand for a trial and his refusal to plead guilty allegedly angered his attorneys. 
On, on March 19, 2018, Luis Sanchez had arrived early to court. He said he spent a few minutes waiting in his car to kill some time before entering the courthouse. Sanchez states he was outside the courtroom doors by 9 a.m. He also claims he attempted to walk inside, but the courtroom was overcrowded. This was evident from courtroom video recordings. Sanchez says he waited outside the courtroom doors so that it would clear up a little before he attempted to find a seat. He explained he did not go in because he had many times in the past been instructed to wait outside and not block the doors for it being a safety hazard. In 2018, I had a court hearing, a pre-trial pre court, court hearing, I believe. Court, court hearings weren't, weren't to, begin to begin until 9 a.m. I, I arrived in front of the courtroom, courtroom doors, doors around a few, a few minutes before, before 9, for, for sure. sure. And, and it, was it was packed, packed. it was overflowing with people, with people so, so I couldn't even get inside. So I waited in front of the courtroom doors so that they have benches on the side because of the same reason. Greetings, people. People here on the island of Zamaya for Miss Norma, Jamaica, can attest to being herded, waiting outside till a name call at most of these courts. I've experienced this at the half a tree criminal court, Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court, Criminal Division, half a tree. I've experienced this at the Melbourne Traffic Court and also the South Camp Road Traffic Court. So, the people that have ever been to court can relate to getting there early. But there's a big old line and a group of people, and you know, our system here, you have to wait and all of these things. However, I've never used an attorney, and this is one of the reasons why I personally can never trust an attorney until that attorney demonstrates to me that they have my best interests at heart. So this is on the international level, and usually micro imitate the macro, but most of our learned people here that went to places where these very people study, practice so-called law, and these very places where these foreign people study, they share the very same information straight across the board. So I can speak from first-hand knowledge. that I've experienced some of this. And I was, I was waiting, I waited, I waited for, for a few minutes until I, I saw, saw that it cleared up a bit, bit and I decided, I decided to go in. in. Once, Once I went in, I didn't, didn't see my attorney, Daniel Torrance, but, but I saw Heather, Heather Chestnuts, Chestnuts, which was, was, was on my case as well. well. After, After a few minutes, I walk up to her and I tell her, I ask her if, Daniel, Daniel Thomas is going to be absent as he had, had been absent at the previous court hearing. hearing. She, she tells me that my case had already been called and to just wait until the judge calls, calls my case again. again. I, at, at that, that moment, I, I realized that something was, was up because I had been in front of the courtroom by, by nine and I didn't see Daniel Thomas leave. So, so I started, started to get really nervous. This. So, so I, I, I made sure, sure to document what time, time I, spoke I spoke with Heather Chestnut, Chestnut just in case, case later on I needed to, I needed, I needed that information. And, and uh, to, my to my surprise, they had called my case 15 minutes before any court proceeding was to start. They called, called my case around 8.45 and, and they, they, they did it in order to get a warrant for my, for my arrest for failure to appear. appear. Oh, 
8.40 a.m. Heather Chestnut points at the clock on the wall. Note that court hearings and her client, Mr. Sanchez, are not scheduled to start until 9 a.m. Good morning, Your Honor. Oh, you're ready? Good. 8.45 a.m. Right on cue. Prosecutor Nathaniel Swift walks up to go on record and falsely accused Mr. Sanchez of frequently missed court hearings and tardiness. Thank you. That's all I'm ready on. And, and Your Honor, Honor Mr. Mr. Morris, Morris is here today. We're ready on the house. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I guess Mr. Sanchez is the prosecuting. Ah, oh, Mr. Sanchez is the brethren defense attorney. Man, these people are really shysters. This guy just walking like a cockroach, knowing he's railroading his client. This is why it's difficult to trust a stranger. When you take your business affair to the stranger, when you take your business affair to the stranger, then we don't know the stranger's intent, their volition, and if they have our best interests at heart. We have no idea. We have absolutely no idea. Uh, oh, you. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Judge, Judge Katie, Katie Bernard's, Bernard's Goodman just asked that very important question because it's only 8.45 a.m. and she's very aware that court proceedings do not start until 9 a.m. I'm sorry? And you're not expecting him? Well, I, ex I always expect him, although last time he was not here. Who is that speaking? Is that the defense attorney? Showing no confidence in his client, absolutely none whatsoever. Look at his gesture. Look at his where his foot is. Look at where his hand is. Since when anyone present themselves or act like that in front of a judge? Symbolism. And it was only after, after my secretary, secretary called him that he remembered to call. Oh, Court, court records, records indicate Mr. Mr. Sanchez, Sanchez was present with, with Heather Chestnut, Chestnut on, on previous court, court hearings, which was, was ironically rescheduled by Judge Bernard Goodman due to Mr. Torrance, Torrance being absent, not, not Sanchez. Sanchez. Mr. Sanchez has uh, committed very late out of, out of dozens, dozens of court, court hearings, court, court records show Mr. Sanchez, Sanchez had been late once and missed just one court date. Note, no, this, this case, case has been active for more than five years due to the ineffective assistance from defense attorneys Heather Chestnut and Daniel Torres. He has a So, bench warrant? After prosecutor Nathaniel Swift lied to the court, he then proceeds to ask for a warrant against Mr. Sanchez. All the while, court proceedings are not to start for another 15 minutes. I asked for a warrant, you know, what well, we have a problem for is I, I don't want to set it for trial somewhere where we have everything. He needs to be here. All right, we'll set a bench warrant, 15,000 cash, and then spawn forfeiture. Thank you. Here you go, the attorney sold his client down the river. Look at that. And look at the activity 
within the court. You know, there is no court going on. A guy from our right, his back is turned to the judge doing his own business. The bailiff conducting his own conversation. The prosecution team having their own conversation. And court is supposed to be in progress. This is where you say conspiracy against fundamental rights and deprivation of rights, fundamental rights under color of law. It's crystal clear right here. The judge's participation along with the prosecutor, along with the defense attorney. It's, this is the deprivation of fundamental rights under color of law, because right here in this international court, you are still guarantee fundamental rights and freedoms. And it's obviously clear on this level. Look at these guys. All pale foreign guys, all well-dressed in business suits. And I'm quite sure, look at how fat they are. Everybody is well paid. Fleecing the people. So here you have a, an example of what the common folks do go through on a daily basis, placing their trust in strangers. I'll tell you this, I know there's good and bad everywhere, but before I choose an attorney to be a friend of mine, I'll have to get to know that attorney first. And that attorney will have to be recommended from a very good long time childhood friend. Like my friend of mine's wife, who is an attorney. And I know my friend, so I give him a lot of respect. And when I meet him wife, it's the very same thing, complete respect. So I'm not here to bash every attorney. You know what I mean? But I don't have a problem schooling or calling out these prosecuting attorneys with unclean hands. At 9.05 9 a.m., there's, there's an overcrowded, overcrowded courtroom. People, people are, are standing between the courtroom doors and waiting outside, outside for seats, seats to become, become available. Again, with even this new corona initiative, people here on the island will definitely relate to this kind of situation. You can't have too much people in court. And at this time, there was no mass being implemented. So 2018, corona never start yet. So it's very interesting. We definitely can relate to the crowd situation where they are, they are requiring you to be at court for nine o'clock and a man like me when I finally get to speak to some of these resident magistrate RM it's usually close to one o'clock two o'clock when court are over so you sit there all day for hours very rude and disrespectful for hours and you're going to say it's a similar technique being used right here. And remember, when I am at court, I present myself. I cannot represent myself or have an attorney represent me. I present myself at court. At 9.07 a.m., Mr. Sanchez walks in wearing a white collared shirt and gray pants. 
bailiff Steve Adams appears to inform Judge Bernard Goodman of his arrival. The Chief Judge Chester Crooks. He's familiar with this. Where I'll be in court and asked to wait outside until they are actually ready to call whatever case that's being presented against me, whatever claim it is. Only because I know that, and it's from experience, I'll be sitting there. And because in a court, you have to have on a mask. And you'll be sitting there for hours. From 10 o'clock, probably right up until 1, 2 o'clock. So I'd rather be outside getting some fresh air without a mask or a muzzle on my face. And I have those rights because the court is always and has always been a public accommodation. It's never a private lodge for these foreign imposters. It's never a private lodge for no attorneys. It's never a private lodge for just the Freemasonic organization and its members. It's a public accommodation. And for this specific island, whatever court building you construct, it is on my land. And I make these claims. And I have public record to verify these claims that I have already made. First in time, first in line. Whatever claim you're going to try to make now will be behind whatever I have done. So this is a prime example of what we as common folk go through. Especially if you are dealing with these kind of attorneys, legal aids, and some of these penny pinching attorneys. Oh, is it Utah versus Bradford? Bradford? I've experienced that too, where the judge would deliberately ignore your position and just carry on as if you're not there, not knowing usually you may have some kind of recording to record their activity and just stop those recordings in safekeeping for these to come, time to come, when they get elected in some big position, you expose them, you tear them down. You saw a public oath and you were indemnify or you, you get some insurance to make sure it doesn't, or the insurance is for protection if you do anything wrong, if you injure or damage anyone. So your public oath is to the people, never to your private organizations. And when you violate that public oath, it's called treason. It not just go for, hey, because you're a politician, it go for the judges to, it go for the attorneys to. There's no title of nobility here. You get me? You foreigners who taught our people to become just like you. And this action here is only an example of what's happening here on this island. At 9.17 a.m., Mr. Sanchez approaches Heather Chestnut 
She would inform Sanchez that a warrant had been issued for his arrest and instructed him to wait until the judge called his case again. That's like when I talk to the prosecuting court clerk, Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court Criminal Division. I think his name was Gibson. And this is when he said, oh, we call a case three times and you weren't here and we issue a warrant for you. And I guess them couldn't find a warrant because they never executed that warrant. And this was in 2020, September. I have all of these documents. It's going to be interesting <laughs> when we construct a book. Prosecutor Nathaniel Swift sees Mr. Sanchez speaking to Ms. Chestnut at 9.17 a.m. Real gentleman, so the man. It's, it's now 10.43 a.m. It, it takes Prosecutor Nathaniel Swift about an hour, an hour and a half before he finally decides to inform Judge, Judge Bernard, Bernard Goodman that Mr. Mr. Sanchez is waiting, waiting between, between the doors. Now, now mind you, Mr. Sanchez, Sanchez has been seen in clear view of the, the judge, the clerks, the bailiff, his attorneys, and of the prosecutor for again the past hour and 36 minutes. Mr. Sanchez can now be seen on his phone unsuccessfully attempting to reach his defense attorney Daniel Torres. Was that one we'd already called? Yeah. And issued a warrant because he's always late and not showing up? This is one of the conspirators. This is the so-called judge, the so-called resident magistrate, the so-called neutral fact finder. And this person will have to get paid from or through the office of the prosecutor. The court clerk is responsible for all of this fraud. The judge's signature will not be on any document until after sentencing, so the judge have plausible deniability. This is why the judges usually claim immunity. In the case of our chief judge, Chester Crooks, he made an order, so his initial, his signature, he have to endorse that, so he shall be a liable. It's not a vendetta thing. It's just the process. My public servant here on the island have been notified duly, have been warned via the public records. Their ignorance of law can never excuse them. Not one. And here we have demonstrate clearly, clearly, the criminal acts, the fraudulent acts, the conspiratorial acts of the so-called justice system, whether it's local or international, here is their standard. This is why they used to have a problem with me, searching me, making sure I don't have any recordings when I go to the courts. And when I place a document saying we have a right to record our public servants without their consent, as long as they're in their public capacity. This is when they stop searching me. This is when everybody starts showing our phones in the court. This is when I carry my key ring, which is an antique 
priceless knife. Forget that knife as a gift. It's priceless. Yes. Constable Byron Martin Dale wish to return my property to me. That's not a problem. But the theft of my property, I'll place that knife at about 5,000 US dollars. That's what you, Byron Martin Dale, will have to compensate me. And that is only, only my antique key ring with an image of my grandmom on that key ring. You're a bunch of despicable thing, you, Constable Byron Martindale. You're despicable. And we're going to execute the warrant. Right. So, so we'll see if he comes, comes in here, here calls his case. <laughs> That's the plan, that's the conspiracy, that's the setup right there in open court. And look at the people in the court, totally unaware of what is going on, completely unaware. At 10.47 a.m., the blatant attempt to cover up their tracks begins. They allegedly falsify court records and justify the unlawful arrest. Sometime after 9 o'clock, this is such a social event. so that we can document what time he came in. Yeah. State of Utah versus Sanchez. Sanchez. Judge, Judge Katie, Katie Bernard Goodman, Goodman and Prosecutor, Prosecutor Nathaniel, Nathaniel Swift go on record to, to deliberately lie about the time Mr. Sanchez, Sanchez arrived at court. court. Hey, Mr. Sanchez, I just, I just want to make sure, sure we see you before you, before you go, go back. back. Your case, case was already called, called this morning. morning. We, we just saw you arrive about 10 minutes ago, ago which would have been a quarter to 11. To 11. I've, I've been, been here since 9.08. Well, you did not come to our courtroom until a quarter to 11. This is the third time you have either missed or been hours late. So we issued a bench warrant for you hours ago. We're going to execute on it this time. I believe we told you last time if you were late, you're going to go into custody. So I spoke with Heather at 9.17. I was here earlier. Judge Katie Bernard Goodman ignores Mr. Sanchez's statement and his defense attorney, Heather J. Chestnut, remains silent. Your Honor, I, I saw the defendant here uh, when I first saw him. I recognized him. I looked at the clock. It was 9.30. This is when I saw him here. Uh, I'll note for the record that his attorney is one that called. Contempt of court. Prosecutor is misleading the court. Prosecutor 
is bearing false witness. Prosecutor is obstructing justice. Prosecutor is tampering with evidence. Prosecutor is tampering with the witness. Prosecutor who is an attorney. Yeah, man. Who is probably the court clerk. Called the case and, and we've had this conversation at least three times. times. Okay. Can I just know what time you're going to do What time did my attorney leave? That, you can ask your attorney about that, but we didn't issue it until after nine. And you're here waiting. Now this lady is going to lie again from the prosecuting team. So them issue them warrant after nine when them call them court way before nine. This is the conspiracy, the common folk have to endure. Hey, after that. Look at them giggling, laughing. It's fun. This is what happened. This is what happened. And they, doesn't, they don't even carry it in them private chambers. In open court. This is the mockery of the judicial and justice system. Complete mockery. And it's on the highest level. <laughs> When, when I created the video, video I tried, tried to, to get some media attention to it. it. I contacted many local news stations, many local reporters and journalists. journalists. Nobody, nobody, nobody wanted, wanted to cover the case. case. Everybody refused. And the only thing that did happen was that one of the news stations or reporters that I contacted, they got in contact with the judge and showed them the video that I had posted on YouTube. And, and based, based, based on that, that the, the, the judge recused herself, removed herself from, 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 from the case. case. I, I didn't get any media attention from it, but at least I got a, a, new, a, new, a new judge, judge from, from that. that. Guys, this, this is just the tip of the iceberg. iceberg. There's, There's so much more we have yet to talk about. about. I wanted, I wanted to give you all as much information and for one as possible without overloading you guys with too much info. info. I think, I think this investigation is proof at how easy it is to conspire against a common citizen in the court of law. How many, how many times has this happened before? before? Guys, please, let's hold these people accountable. accountable. Share this video, voice your concerns. This, this needs to be exposed. exposed. Stay, Stay tuned for part two. two. This, this has been an ASD Docs investigation. Thanks for watching. Maybe, Maybe if you would want to touch on the fact that, that Heather, Heather Chestnut, Chestnut is now the Attorney General's Office new civil, civil rights attorney, attorney and how, like, like <laughs> she's, she's a, a civil, civil rights, rights attorney? attorney? Yes. yes. For, For the, the Attorney General's Office. They yeah, all of these corruption. These are the people who are fighting I'm telling you, man, this is civil rights. This is crazy. <laughs> That's, That's These are the people who are fighting for your civil rights. Yeah, man. These corrupt criminals. Uh, this action is criminal. This is why we don't trust a lot of these registered organizations. You might talk the talk, but the moment you're registered to this foreign construct, talking about political party and unite and all of these things. You're a part of the construct. You're just here to bring the vibe. You like to be autonomous, totally independent and separate from what is foreign to us. And when a minor express that. So anything we attach itself to the foreign construct via registration, for participating in some political system which is the same system then we don't have no interest you talk probably is just that talk
know what I mean? Just to get the people and go back here. And then you see a whole switcheroo go on because who control what is registered? The same system. So you'll fool us sometime, but not all the time. And we are totally receptive to learning and we'll always be learning. We have no problem in correcting ourselves as we move forward. But we'll be learning. <laughs> So now she she left left the what is it called the, um i guess, I guess she got a lot of uh, heat, heat from, from this, this from co-workers, co-workers or at least that's what my other, other attorney, attorney told me and so, and so she, she left, left the solid, solid legal, legal defender association, association and she moved to the attorney, attorney general's office, office as, as a civil, civil rights, rights attorney, attorney. and that, that is why I believe the AG's office refused to investigate, refused to even acknowledge my complaints. Here you have it, people. Here you really have it. I'm on the system at work at its highest level. I'm on this brethren right here. Is a defense attorney. This now is a civil rights attorney. Everybody corrupt and in cahoots with each other. Court is in session and all kind of party have won. Absolutely no respect, so this is nothing not really going. You know what I mean? It's just fraud in every aspect of the world. It's a sad situation, however, here it is. And this happened to me. I'm experienced this to this very day. And probably by if YouTube allow this tape to go out there in the public, I'm quite sure RMM X may recuse herself, recuse herself from the case. In my situation with the right to travel, which is the right to be free. These traffic courts and criminal courts. Are committing fraud. Criminal conspiracy and deprivation of rights. Fundamental rights and freedom under color of law under the pretense of law, under the guise of law, which is their policy, their legal practice. And here it is. This is what the legal practice is. So if this guy have a defense attorney and him treat him this way, I am grateful. I never walk that path, traverse that way. <laughs> It's a sad situation when this is where the so-called judicial system has degraded to the people. It's not the system like the people who is employed by the system and make a mess of the system. This is why we have to hold these people accountable. Don't let them impress you with no title. You're a man. You defecate just like I. You urinate just like I. You're a man. You're a woman. You're not gods. And your title of nobility do not apply. As I have my own title, Nestorian King. And as king, I have no equal. Absolutely none. However, you have me in your court, so I'm going to expose you. I'm taking you all over the water and exposing your nakedness, just like how oh, yeah, drug in the prison system. And I degrade me, I humiliate me, and have your cultural leaders I talk about me psychologically. Mentally and financially, 
Yeah, man. Character assassination by the government of Jamaica. And by extension, its agent, Chief Judge Chester Crooks. The man, Chester Crooks. Yeah, man. Courtney Maxwell. Yeah, man. R.M. Edwards. You guys. Yeah, man. Don't forget the court clerk, prosecuting court clerk, Richard James. Are you? You guys are all conspirators. I have this new traffic court prosecutor. Her name is Wilson. She has never given me her name. I can't wait for it. Get her memo in front of me so I can publish it. I'll have to do a forensic investigation on her. We may have to dig in everything about she because she seems not gay, she seems tasty and not in a good way. Because she not look like she keep herself tidy. She seems like the type where if she ain't have a maid, she live in a field. That's that court clerk Wilson. I'll show you absolutely. <laughs> Nothing at all. So you're rude and disrespectful. And usually people like you were concubines. Those secret organizations. So you don't impress me. Wilson. You really don't impress me. And I'll bring a claim against you and ruin your career just the same, Wilson. Out of order. You have no standing in the case, Wilson. You have no first hand knowledge of the case, Wilson. Don't speak in my court. I'm going to embarrass you. I'm telling you now. I'm going to object every single time you open that trap of yours, Wilson. Quite sure you guys going to rearrange your team again, bring some different people, but I'm putting on notice. So the game is over, the jig is up, your fraud shall be exposed. You have done wrong, you have caused injury. Come on. And you all shall be held accountable, all of you all conspirators. For your name is on my document somewhere. And on the court case record, you guys are attached to my case somewhere. And for whatever reason, you know I have a right to be free, and I am free. I have a right to travel freely. You cannot arbitrarily just take away my private property. And say it's okay without a compensation, without being held accountable. Byron Martin did. You will play the role of this cop. Because you never bring forward your video cam tape footage. Where is that? To show that you falsely and unlawfully arrest me on the roadside and confiscate seeds. My private property without due process of law. You did that, Byron Martin Dale, constable for the traffic and enforcement branch. You did that. You shall be placed under that bus, I guarantee it. You, Byron Martin Dale, you are that culprit. You're a liar, sir. Yeah, man. You're unqualified for the possession as counsel. I know they might even ignore these things and probably promote you to corporal and arise you up through the rank only because I can see that you're a Freemason member. And you probably have family connected to that society. 
Pastor, true nepotism, you yeah, rise up, but you're a filthy man. In time, your actions, your actions. <laughs> so demonstrate who and what you are. What is law? Law is contract. And contract makes law. And what is the contract around here? That's the very one the Governor General endorsed, which is the Charter of Fundamental Rights and Freedom Constitutional Amendment, April 2011. That is law. Anything else is color of law. And our people are just learning these differences. They are learning from I. And it's my pleasure, but someone need to compensate me. Return my property. Leave me in my society alone. Let us be. We have a right to be free. And we are free. So foreign corporate colonial oppressors let us be.